Once every eon, we are blessed with the true hero. Some may say that Elon Musk is the greatest hero of the 21st century. Perhaps Master Shake. No. There is only room for one true hero, and that hero is the mime. The mime first appeared in the greatest film to hit cinemas since Joe Dirt's The Battle for Muni. When you first see the mime, she's with the lesser known heroes, Fool Duke and Robariot. While Fool Duke and Robariot are like rival Yu Gi Oh duelers, the mime is above petty conflicts. She has grace, she has style, she has our hearts. In contrast to Star Butterfly, the mime always has a plan. While Star desires Marco, the mime desires the sweet release of death. While you could say the mime is filler in the battle for Muni, I would beg to disagree. I would argue that she is the main character of the movie, our protagonist, if you will. The mime is first seen doing her bouncing ritual on King Ludo's bed. This is done to summon the demons inside of her to prepare for battle. As King Ludo returns to his bedroom, Fool Duke, Robariot, and Marco Diaz escape through the vent using a rope of handkerchiefs. She follows them by eating the rope despite the fact that such an act is extremely unsanitary and dangerous for her digestive system. That was her first scene act of true heroism. When they group up in the vent, Robariot and Fool Duke begin to roast each other. But even in their state of true hatred, they couldn't deny the artistic genius of the mime. The mime is visibly excited about this development. When Marco decides to break into the home of King Ludo once again, Robariot and Fool Duke are hesitant to follow him. Just as he's about to be caught, the mime convinces Fool Duke and Robariot to rescue him in the most glorious way by pretending to put on a show for the bamboozled King Ludo. The mime then shows off her true talent as she takes the full impact of Robariot's body on her handkerchief version of the inner jaw from Alien. As they put on their show, the mime does the unexpected. She speaks. She tells Marco to steal the key to King River's cuffs. Mimes aren't supposed to speak. She broke character just to help Marco, a kid she met just moments ago. That is an act of a true hero. Soon after this sacrifice, Robariot and Fool Duke get in a terrible fight. The mime tries to break this fight up, but unfortunately it went too far. King Ludo tries to capture our heroes, but it was too late. Apparently, Fool Duke managed to steal the key before Ludo complimented the mime on her artistic brilliance. As they enter the dungeon to save the king, it is visibly seen that all of the members of the Resistance were standing on the mime's head so they could crawl out of the sewer. Alas, the mime's quest was for nothing. The king didn't want to be rescued. This means that the mime risked her life and broke character for nothing. However, she still doesn't show resent for what she did. She regrets nothing. In the sequel to King Ludo, Toffee, the mime joins Marco in his battle against King Ludo. After they save Star Butterfly, a local speed addict, they plan to ruin King Ludo's credibility. Unfortunately, they are discovered and put in chains. Ludo takes Star away, and Marco is rescued by Toad Man and Old Lady. Marco had the opportunity to save the mime, but instead, he chose to leave her for dead. This made her start crying. She was betrayed by someone who she thought was her friend. Now she's stuck in a stinky prison cell with Robariot and Fool Duke. So while we need to wait until November to see the conclusion to the mime's arc, we can remember her sacrifice and betrayal. Stay strong, mime. Stay strong.